welcome to another exciting episode of Up to Mischief. In this episode, we see the crew working late nights to make progress on the golf. Izal travels to Paris and encounters a very interesting dish. We find out what performance upgrades are happening in the workshop and travel to Neisner to see what the Neisner Motor Show has to offer. So sit back and enjoy another jam-packed showcase. All right, update on the Lemons 9-hour build. We are not as far as we would like to be. I'm not gonna lie, it's been pretty stressful in the garage. We have been having a lot of cars, customer cars coming in and out, and obviously we don't have enough time to work on our own lemon. But obviously, every evening we've got the guys behind us working hard at it. Let's see what Naeem and Herman have to say about the progress up until now. We're now busy with neatening up the, the engine bay, fixing the wiring. And then once it's, once it's all built and put together, then everything's coming out. Once everything's been mocked up to, so that everything fits, we need to make sure the new turbo fits, the downpipe fits, everything fits. Then we'll take everything out and then we have to drop the compression on the engine a little bit uh, because we have to run pump petrol, so low octane fuel for this lemons race. And uh, so we can't, we can't uh, have a turbocharged high compression engine. So then we will skim the pistons, put some uh, thicker head gaskets in or whatever we need to do to drop the compression. This is the manifold that's going to go into the engine. The reason it's so long is because the intake runners on an MP9 manifold are quite long. So it looks a bit odd here, but it'll look good on the car. This is just to mock up for the turbocharger. So we're putting a small little diesel turbocharger on it. So that it'll boost real, really early. We're not aiming for a lot of power. So that will go into the back of the engine. This will be mounted on, that's why it's, there's no flange yet, so we've got to decide what angle we want it, where we want it, how we want it, and that will be mocked up for next time, and then we'll weld everything together, and then the turbo will go away for refurbishment, and then we fit it, and hopefully it'll work. So Nimpis, when, when is the race? The 6th of July. The 6th of July. I think we'll finish at 4 a.m. The 6th of July. <laughs> on the 6th of yeah. July. <laughs> We're gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be cutting it close. We've got to whole, run a whole workshop and build that's a car normal. at the same time. That's a so, uh, so yeah, so it's it's gonna be tight, but uh, we should we should get there. All right, gear selectors, is this the old one or new one? This is the old one, old one. So obviously we removed the standard gearbox, the standard Mark 1 gearbox. Yeah. We've now fitted a 5-speed TDI cable shift gearbox. So this is the standard selector rod, which, okay. which the, that's the hole that we closed there. Yes. This thing rests onto the sashi. Yes, the hole there, the rod goes underneath the car. So we okay. don't need that anymore. This and they're both, we're both running 5-speed gearbox. Both 5-speed gearboxes are. Yeah. And where this did this, is, this... This is now, this is from, a, I think, a Golf 5. So this is a shift dial with shift cables. So this I runs see. inside the car, which we don't need the hole for anymore. Okay, so closing so up the hole, fitting on top. This will mount on top, and this will go out into the engine bay. Oh, well, there you go. Makes things a lot easier. I don't think it makes things a lot easier. It's actually a lot more work, but we're getting it going. So while untaping the old mm -hmm. harness, something happened, and this is the exact reason why we have to do this. So. Can you please explain what is that that you have in your hand? So this is obviously part of a of an old wiring harness. We were busy untaping it over here. Yeah. And then there was some some corrosion, maybe battery acid or something that fell onto the harness underneath this bracket. And okay. as we were untaping it, I pulled on the, on this wire and it, and it broke. broke it. That's obviously why we're doing this, trying to rewire the whole car because you don't want a problem like this in a nine-hour race. That's yeah. gonna take you three hours to find, another two hours to fix. Yeah. Um, so we just. We're doing this just to prevent any of those type of uh, basically accidents, accidents or niggles or problems. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. We well, don't want to we don't want to deal with that on on race day. So, so as you can see, something so simple uh, is getting this thing to be reliable. So, yeah, making sure that everything is all new is what we did right here. soldering a positive cable to the joint here. We don't know, obviously just twist it together and tape it because it can come apart. So if you okay. add solder, it makes it like a, a proper connection. Proper connection. Yeah. And then you're just going to... No, we'll tape it afterwards with the heat shrink. Okay, heat shrink. to make sure that it's soldered. 
See now you can't pu you can't pull it apart. Oh I see. But if you just twisted it without solder, you could pull it apart. Pull the single part there. No, I didn't even know it was doing anything. It just looked like it was on fire. <laughs> whatever can go wrong in the nine hour we wanna try and eliminate. So I see. whatever wiring can get damaged or whatever we wanna run it outside of the engine bay. Okay, it's so inside this fender. Inside here. the fender well yeah, so that when we work it on the car we can't damage any wiring. If the car catches a light, it's not gonna okay. melt any wiring. Okay. You know what I mean? And it's gonna look nice. And it's gonna look nice. Our plans are to just to see what power it makes. Because Warwick says that it battles to spin the wheels at the back. Are you, are you really but I said he's got 260s, 5s on. They might be a bit wide. So he just wants to see if it makes standard power. It's a little bit low there. For exhaust, the standard one makes about 185. Then with exhaust, unit chip intake and whatever you should be making to 10. You see what it's like on the third because sometimes it, if the intake can be back, you say you're struggling to wheel spinning. As you can see, the crew is cutting it fine with getting Lightning McQueen ready. And we can only hope that everything falls into place. After the break, Izal savors some traditional Afrikaans cuisine at the Plum Tree in Paris. Guys, it was about an hour's drive from Johannesburg and I'm finding myself in Paris. Today we're visiting the Plum Tree Restaurant. Vintage restaurant with authentic Afrikaans traditional good food. Let's talk to Sandra, the owner, to see what it's all about because it does have a deli side as well as a candy store. So guys, I'm sitting here with Sandra from Plum Tree Vintage Restaurants. Absolutely love the name. Where did that originate from? 19 years ago, I had this dream of having a little coffee shop. So I bought it as a little coffee shop with about 49 seats. It grew from a coffee shop to a restaurant and I had to do something different. And because I had all my family stuff in the shop here, I decided, you know what, I must do what my grandmother did. So I took Granny's recipes and we started with that thing. And then it changed into a vintage restaurant because of the interior and the menu. Well, you're definitely talking my language when it comes to the menu. We're going to talk about that in a minute because uh, I've got <laughs> so many questions yeah. for you. I love so many of the dishes that you actually have available. On the one side here, yeah, it's everything from biscuits to rusks to sauces to condiments to spices. And on the other side, it looks like it's Willy Wonka's chocolate factory with all the sweets and everything that's happening on that side. Yeah, you know, the, uh, like the fudges and the nougats are made by Dick Sweets. Uh, they are doing it since 1938. Still the same family, oh, making no the fudges and the fresh nougat. Every week we order and it's freshly made for us. The other sweets, this, if you can't find it here, you can't find it anywhere. to 
talk about this exceptional menu. There's the all famous baburti on this menu. And then Malkos. I mean, that makes me think of winter days in my grandmother's kitchen. And I'm sure that's that's how you got used to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then your oxtail. And you even do oxtail pie. So what's the story about that? Yeah, well, many years ago, uh, my late husband uh, started a pub across the street. Yeah. And there was no kitchen. So uh, we had to find something that he can uh, offer the, the customers, but only to warm up. So we decided, you know what, what about taking the most favorite meats in the shop and put it into a pie? So then we made the offal pie, the oxtail pie. At that time, I don't think you, you did get any offal pies and it was really unique. It was so unique that Sari, of course, put it in their magazine. And that was, that was for us pretty nice. Yes, I can yes, imagine. Yeah. And we're going to have to talk about the size of this coffee because this is also a Buddha biscuit. Like oh, this a is a Buddha biscuit. Buddha biscuit. When you talk about Buddha biscuit, we talk about in Afrikaans coffee diva. Okay. Because it steals all the coffee out of your cup. Oh yes, of course, so because vital. once you dunk this beautiful rusk in there, half the cup of coffee is actually gone. But that's the reason for the size. Okay. Yes, yeah. I love the attention to detail you put into things. I mean, with everything else on the menu, you even named some things like the biker's dream, because I'm sure but ice is a biker's dream to begin with. Yes, so yes. why not yeah. come and stop here? Paraiso is a very, uh, a, a very famous destination for bikers and even car uh, clubs, car clubs. Paraiso is in the middle of most of the, uh, it's an hour's drive from uh, Joburg, it's an hour's drive from Clarksdorp, it's close to Potchefstroom, Kronstadt is not far away. So it's a very nice destination for people to meet. Yes. Yeah. And you even have the old Veal magazines. I mean, guys, this is from October. 1981. I mean, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> and it was a whole 72 cents. I love the vintage elements you find in the, this shop. Did you collect them? And most of the stuff I had, yes. Um, not, not collect for like the reason for collecting, just um, very sentimental. So I've got a lot of uh, magazines that was from my grandmother and my parents yes. and I just can't throw away anything. I do often find that something quite unique about the Afrikaans culture is we're very sentimental really? about things very because sentimental. everything is telling a story. I can even show you with a moor coffee here if you uh, see inside the little newspaper yeah. I've got there. That, that, this is from our local um, newspaper. Can you newspaper. even cut that out? So, So we've gone from coffee and we've spoken about the menu, but I have to ask, what are you preparing for me for lunch today? For you for lunch, we are going to do a proper traditional dish called the smiley. Oh dear. So that's a sheep's head baked in the oven for the whole night. I put it in about seven o'clock last night and I took it out six o'clock this morning. And tell me maybe for viewers, why the name smiley? I think you will see it for yourself when they dish it up for you <laughs> that it is smiling. <laughs> Oh dear. And tell me when it comes to sides? A sides will be a sum. When I overnight the, the smiley, there's a nice sauce coming out between the bones. So we will put that sauce on top of the sum. And then pumpkin pie, very, very famous with all our dishes. People even also eat pumpkin pie for pudding here. And then green beans. Oh well guys, a smiling lunch with pumpkin pie and green beans. Oh my. Do you understand the smile? I do. <laughs> the smiling element of this, I'm going to tilt it a little bit. And I really hope, oh, now it's even moving. <laughs> <laughs> if you are in the area or if you ever decide to come to Paris, you're going to have to come to the Plum Tree Vintage Restaurant for authentic, traditional Afrikaans food. Sandra, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It was nice having you. Mmm, I don't know if sheep head is my thing but I can definitely lose myself in that candy store. After the break, I travel to Neisner, to the Neisner Motor Show, where I get to meet some incredible motoring enthusiasts. Hi, 
guys, we've been up since 4 a.m. this morning, traveling five hours to see this show. It's definitely not the biggest car show, but I can say it's located in one of the most beautiful areas, and that is Neisner. All right, so we have Jan next to us, and he's the owner of this beautiful, beautiful car. What's the inspiration behind all of this? And yep. so this is a kit car. Uh, I started in 2001 building, and then it took me three years oh, to, wow. to, to finish it. It's a 350 Chevy motor. Uh, the color is, I love blue. Not because I'm a Blue Bull supporter, which I am, is but... That really? uh, <laughs> part of the inspiration. <laughs> part of inspiration. <laughs> I moved from Pretoria to Sheshfield, so I brought the car along. The okay. roads around here is beautiful for, for this kind of car. Yeah, with the rooftop yeah. down. There's always people looking at the Cobra. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. if there's a poor standing next to it, this Ferrari. <laughs> people look at the Cobra. <laughs> yeah, this is the muscle. Yeah, this is the muscle. This is man's car. There is one question we want to ask yes, you. Yes, yes. Is that, do you get up to mischief with this car? Uh... I yeah, it all. It, it's kind of tempting to be a bit of mischief with this car. <laughs> you you want to hear it sometimes, yeah. uh, you know, you hear a bit of wheel spin. Of course. Uh, <laughs> where they can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now this is wild. This is why you come to a car show and see these special builds. Like they say, it's built, not bought, right? Yeah, exactly. And everybody, this is JP. Yeah. And he has his incredible Mercedes. I've always loved an old Mercedes, um, yeah. the vintage look. The, I, I like German cars and this, this is the Strik 8, I like they say. I put a modern S320 engine in it, this 3.2. Oh, the funny thing is that the gearbox. So yeah, what are you running in there? It's got a five-speed manual gearbox from a, a Sangyong. You a know, Sangyong. Sangyong Busa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the engine and transmission, it's built by Mercedes. I put the dual mesh flywheel from the, the 2.7. The clutch has got a button clutch in it. Okay, okay. And how's that to drive in traffic? It's, it's very nice because okay. it's got a dual mesh flywheel, okay. so it's soft. But as soon as you, if you drop the clutch, it bites. <laughs> like, it's, it's insane. The most important question is, do you get up to mischief with this thing? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think so. I can tell you this, I, I, change, I change the weather from sunny to overcast. <laughs> that I can tell you, <laughs> if you want to know. Okay, fair enough. Would you like me to do a startup? Dude, that would be honestly amazing. Let's do it. This is now what you call American muscle. Yeah, definitely. Um, That's what it screams, eh? And um, yeah, we've built, I've built this car completely up. The whole look is, a, I call it, I know it's, it's not a starch gear and hutch car, but it just yeah. looks like a starch gear and hutch. It's the uh, presence, when you walk up to it, it's so big. Yeah, and I've kept all the originals so it can be put back, even the rims, I can, it can, everything can everything be put back to it, even the filters, original. everything. But let me show you around here. Yeah, please. Oh, wow. Yeah. Straight out of the boat, we, did a, we went to West Coast, we did a big trip with it, and it runs perfectly. Yeah, There's not even an oil leak. So I just took it out of storage and it was for six months in storage and I, I literally went, climbed inside the car, switched the ignition off, pumped the fuel three times, pushed the button and boom, and the car ran. I, I've got a love for muscle cars, I yeah. do, yes. um, they, and they give you a good cool feel, you feel like Vin Diesel driving of them. Yeah, they yeah, cook, definitely. Cook, 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 and that <laughs> noise and the feeling and the, and the, the fuel smell and the... So look, it, it is cool experience. cars, and if you press the throttle, the car goes sideways. And okay, it's, it's so it gives you that whole experience. It's, yeah, it's, it's a fun car to drive, I must say. It really is. I'll start it up and run. Yeah, we would love to hear this. It man. runs beautiful. Old school, give it a little bit of a pump. Oh, that smell just takes you back then, eh? This is Wolf. He's also a customer at our shop. You didn't tell us while you were at our shop that you had these incredible beauties also. Look, I've got a love for American cars, so this is a 65 Mustang. If I can call it, it's kind of a cult car. It's every uh, child's dream, eh? Everybody looks at this, and that's what I love about this car. You drive it and you see these little guys. They stiffen yeah, up and yeah. they go, wow. This car, as it looks now, would be the car that they raced with in 1964, 1965, when the first race car was launched. If you fold this up, look at how clever this was done. Oh, no ways. And there you've got your space. Oh, you got you've got it. You've got groceries, can't even... you can quickly put it in there. Wait. And it's so easy to do this. Is this is this how it came out? It's exactly how they made it. Oh. It is so clever. <laughs> that 
That's incredible, man. This is a 2017 Shelby GT500 Super Snake. In South Africa, there was only three built in 2017. And then what makes this car even more wonderful is it's, this is the 50th anniversary series. This vehicle is running on a Whipple supercharger. It's a five liter V8, as you know. This vehicle is pushing out about 760 horsepower on the rear wheel. The thing of a Shelby is inside, so you still have heated seats inside here. Oh, wow. That's uh, you still have speed control, you know? A nice sound system in this car, but the moment that you start fiddling with the buttons inside of the yeah. car, it turns into a race car. <laughs> so I gotta ask you, with these meaty tires, do you get up to mission with this car? <laughs> oh well, f obviously. You don't buy cars like this to um, drive 60 k's an hour. No. From meeting Will, JP and Bernie and showing us so much love and car performance, we honestly can't wait to see what this car show offers us in the future. Wow, I can't wait for the next Nice the Motor Show. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Optimus Ship. In the next episode, the crew completes Lightning McQueen and gets ready for the first test run. Izal travels to the Italian job in Bryanston and experiences truly authentic Italian flavor in every detail and dish. We see what performance upgrades are happening in the workshop and Lightning McQueen has its first test run at a Kilani racetrack open day. For any more information, visit our website optimusshift.co.za or follow our social media links. See you on the next episode. <laughs>